Holy cannoli, how's everybody doing tonight? Boy, do we have a show for you on the lounge tonight. And I can't wait. I am just so excited. I love when there's a lot of energy in the house. Granted, I love interviewing, doing my serious interviews and interviewing one-on-one -on -one with some of our experts. But when we got music in the house and when we got another medium and an animal communicator and we got like, two, you know, usually you're not going to see two mediums in the same place place at the same time. We're, we're very lone wolves. <laughs> we kind of operate in our own energy and we kind of get together when the time arises, like when the wolves come out and howl at the moon, like who knows, right? But this is such a special time that we are in right now. Okay. First of all, I know you guys have been going crazy for the past month. Okay. People have been out of their minds. People have been sick. Um, the energy has been low. We've had Venus retrograde. So all your relationships were being tested to the core. We've had Mercury retrograde finally direct. We're ready. Like this weekend, still a bunch of miscommunication. So like today, especially there's been like lots of miscommunication. So don't just be like, oh, Mercury retrograde is ready to go and I'm ready to go. And I'm going to just start all the new projects and new things. You got to give it like the tide. You got to give it time to ease out. Right. And then we had this amazing new moon in Aquarius, which is like one of the most powerful, like new moons of the year. So basically set your intentions, set them even at the bar bigger than you have set them before, because you are going to be really moving forward this year. Like this is the new year. Plus we had the Chinese lunar new year, the year of the water taiga, when the year of the water taiga. So things are going to be fierce, right? You're going to be crushing those dreams, crushing those goals. But when we started 2022, we didn't have that big push of energy. Everything was a mess. Now it's actually finally the beginning of the new year. That's the energy that we have going on. So let me just say hi to a couple people. All right, Magda, there you are. We haven't seen you on the stream in a while. Glad to be with you too. Nevin, good to see you. Colleen, good to see you. Beth, how you doing? Linda, how are you? Maria, happy Friday. Ellen, good to see you too. Feel free to say hello, hello, hello. And you know what? We have so much going on tonight. I am just going to, okay. Bonnie, you need good vibes. You got to stay from the start of the show to the finish of the show, okay? What are some announcements? We have so many good things going on. Second of all, um, yeah, energy forecasts. If you guys aren't getting my daily, weekly, and monthly energy forecasts, they're coming out next week. The monthly forecast only goes out to my email subscribers. So if you're not on the list, you're not going to get every day of the month. I go over the daily energy every day. Go to the link in the description of this video. You will see a link where you can sign up to the email list. It's free, but I do not post them publicly. So you got to get on that list. And the intuitive development online series and program is coming up next month. So you guys need to get on the wait list. Get, get all that pre-launch promos that we're going to be giving out only one time. Get on the wait list for that. Be the first one to know when it's coming out. So without further ado, I can't wait to bring on, first of all, Jacob Cole, our world percussionist, was a hit the last time he was on here. He took people out of the ether and just like, man, his, his stuff is amazing. And the energy he's able to generate when he plays, oh my God, 
it really, you guys loved him. We're bringing him back. Okay. And not only do we have Jacob with us, we have Mark Woodyak. Okay. Our international jazz violinist. He actually played at my mom's 70th surprise birthday party 10 years ago, <laughs> which he probably doesn't remember, but he's amazing. And they're kind of coming together and they worked on an album together and they're going to be bringing us like, they're going to be amping it up tonight. Okay. Then we have media Mari. You know what? I'm probably going to pronounce her last name correct. So I'm not even going to try. She can, when she comes on, she can let us know what it is. Cause that's the worst when you like pronounce somebody's last name incorrectly, but she is a psychic medium animal communicator. She's trained with some of the world's best mediums. And I can't bring her, I can't wait to bring her on to talk shop. And I know you guys have questions for one medium. You better be getting your questions ready for two. We're going to be talking a lot about it. And she's also an animal communicator. So I know we love our pets more than people half the time, right? So without further ado, I am going to bring on, first of all, I need to talk about Jacob and, and Mark, because they're going to be getting our energy ready to move forward for all those all those new beginnings we we're talking about, we have to activate the energy. Okay. So let me just talk a little bit about Jacob. I'm going to talk a little bit about Mark. They're going to come on and they're going to get the show rolling with the percussion and with the violin. It's going to be amazing. So Jacob Cole, he's a professional musician, drummer, teacher, world percussionist, proud father, rooted at NEPA, the 57000. Jacob has been playing music since the age of seven and has been teaching for over 10 years. He's a Berkeley College of Music graduate, has had the incredible opportunity to play with some of the finest musicians, and he hopes he can either inspire or move you through his music. Like that's his point. He's going to he's his music is healing for him. It heals his body, it heals his spirit, and that's what he's going to do for us. And music is his way to meditate and get back to the world. It's his sole gift. He loves to perform. Okay, and then we got Mark. Mark is an internationally recognized jazz violinist. As an avid multi-instrumentalist, composer, and producer, his musical studies began at age three. So he's even like, he's like way ahead of Jacob here at three versus seven, you know, after his mother discovered that he had perfect pitch. That's amazing. Classically trained on violin and keyboards, Mark has been expanding upon his musical passions for 32 years. So you're giving us your age there, Mark. His, con his concert debut was in 1996 with the Northeastern Pennsylvania Philharmonic. Mark has the distinction of being the first violinist was accepted into the jazz program and for some reason i lost the rest of that text let me get it jazz program at the eastman school of music receiving numerous scholarships and laying a foundation for his prolific career in jazz classical and contemporary performance and composition he was a 2014 recipient of the f lamet bellin grant for artistic excellence in violin and keyboards and he has achieved notoriety and is widely regarded as one of the leading players of his generation his versatility in music styles is portrayed with true soul and all of his forms so i cannot wait to welcome to the show and you guys give a warm welcome to jacob and mark hi guys let me get this this background music off here hey how you doing Good. Thanks for having me, and uh, thanks I'm for glad, having me. Yeah, too. I'm glad Mark could join me today. He lives right down the street from me, so it's a nice little journey. Even though it's icy out, he made it safely. What? So did you walk, Mark? No. Thanks for shoveling the spot out too. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you didn't, yeah, Kristen did. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. It was really beautifully done. I felt like this was waiting for me, um, oh, so I didn't. God. I didn't have any issues getting in, and. Uh, yeah. Just uh, earlier in the day, I warmed up the car for at least an hour so that I could drive people around today because there, there was a sheet of ice over all of the, the doors. You couldn't even open them on most of the cars. So. Oh, my God. So we'll try and warm you up a little bit here with some music. Yeah, so what are you guys going to do to, like, uh, start we're, off? We're, we're going to play a song off my album, uh, Hope, here. Um, this is uh, my hand pan album that came out in um, 2000, January of 2020. We're going to play... Uh, um, uh, chill song. It's called chill cell. The song is called chill song. Okay. So we're going to chill. Yes. All right. I'm going to mute myself. You go. All right. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
I can't even take it. Can't even take it. <laughs> we haven't played in a while, so that was nice for us. Yeah, that it was beautiful. Thank you. Thank I, I just, thank you. I like, I'm trying to like change banners and do it, and I'm like, I have to be into this, and I just want to zone out. I just want to zone out. Well, the album uh, version of it, off of, off of Hope, features me and him, but I'm also playing tabla. Uh, which is an Indian percussion instrument over that same groove, so it's kind of extra special on on the album version. Yes, well, it's and it's not as long. We, I want to bring this up too. If you guys want to purchase the album, just go to jacobcolepercussion.com. Yeah, and it's available on iTunes as as well and, and stuff like that. But for awesome. a hard copy, I do have I have about eighty hard copies left. So if you're interested in a hard copy, which is a double disc album. Um, beautiful. It's a, it's a it's a it's a beautiful piece. Yeah, it's very nice. It's really, collectors, like something collectors to have. You know, not many people have CDs anymore, or even CD players. But I know you guys have artwork. You have a CD. Yeah, the CDs are really cool, and uh, I think I it's think a very like, special CD. Yeah. I think you'd enjoy it. So oh, thanks, yeah. thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely, and people you love guys, it. I put up here that you guys are going to be on Inside Time or Sunday at nine p.m. Yes. Do you want to talk yeah, about that a little bit? Two-hour concert. Wow. This is, yeah. yeah so, so the link to the Inside Timer Show is in the description of this video. So if you go up to the description, YouTube or Facebook, it's right there and you guys can join. Awesome. So we'll give you guys a little bit of a break. I'm going to bring on our next guest and we'll see you for your second song in about 15. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. All right. Oh my God, guys. Oh my God. I just like wanted to like, I just wanted to just like go into myself on there, but I have to pay attention. So um, Matthew, where can we get the album? Uh, I think we just posted that. Um, you can get it. At, I'll just put it up again so you guys can see. Uh, you can purchase Jacob's music featuring Mark at jacobcolepercussion.com. And they are from Northeast Pennsylvania. So support our local musicians. And let's see what everybody else is saying here. Lojo, love the song. Lori, amazing. Type of, well, he's going to have to talk to you about the drum when we go into the questions. Uh, Kristen says it's called a hand pan, so somebody knows. Uh, so awesome. Um, Bernie, that was freaking awesome. Jennifer loved it. Beth loved it. Everybody loved it. So how could you not? So, but with, I mean, I'm just so excited. They're going to come back do two more songs. But I'm even more excited to bring on another medium onto the show. It's been so long since we've had another medium on the show. We had a co-host who was a medium for a while, at least. I miss her so much, my little friend. And uh, unfortunately, with her job schedule, she couldn't come back anytime soon. So I miss having somebody to talk about shop, talk shop with. But Mari is also an animal communicator, which is something that I don't do. So I'm very interested to hear more about that. So let's get, let's talk a little bit about our guest. So Mari Cartagenova, I hope I pronounced that correctly, is a psychic medium, animal communicator, and best-selling author with clients from all over the globe, she specializes in heartfelt messages from both past loved ones and living or past animals. So this is amazing. I have to ask her a couple of questions about that. So when you sit down with Mari, you can really feel the presence of your loved one. Her connections offer specific detail and leave you feeling both at peace and uplifted at the same time. She's also trained with top mediums from all over the world, including Tony Stockwell, John Holland, Lisa Williams, James Van Pra, Thomas John, and Lauren Rainbow. And so if you guys have some questions, what kind of questions can you ask, Mari? Basically, are your loved ones okay? Do your animals really understand you after they pass? Uh, do you need a medium to, to connect with past pets or your loved ones? How can the average person connect more with their spirit? So just a couple questions if you'd like to do that. So without further ado, hi, Mari, how are you? Hi, how are you? You know, I'm like vibing with that music. I feel like I'm floating on a little cloud. It's very cool. Aren't they amazing? It's super amazing. I know. So yeah, I don't know you personally, but I know that you you do everything that I do probably and a little bit of some different stuff. So people, it's almost like when I do shows and I say, yeah, we could talk to your loved ones. And sometimes your loved ones will bring in their pets and everybody goes, oh, like, and I'm like, so I guess you don't like your loved ones. You'd rather you talk to your pets, <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. right? <laughs> so um, 
I know a lot of people have questions about that, but I just want to find out a little bit about you and what your passions are as a medium, how long you've been doing this and who you have a whole long list of people you trained with. Who was your favorite medium? Who did you like? The, oh, I, I know it's hard on. to say. I know it's hard, <laughs> but like, who did you enjoy? Like, who was like the most eccentric? Who'd you love working with? I mean, we got to get the juice on the behind the scenes with some of okay. these people. Yeah, well, I mean, honestly, I, I liked working with them all. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I do have to say if uh, if somebody, if you haven't trained with or worked with Tony Stockwell, he's a medium from the UK and he is awesome. So I have to say, you know, I'm team Tony, although, you know, working with, you know, Lisa and Thomas and everybody else has been amazing. But I, I have to say, I'm not that he's my favorite because we like them all, but Tony yes. is, really likes to think outside the box. And so that's what I really like about him. And he's, you know, fun and nice. Now, did you actually go over to the UK to meet with him or did he, was he in the United States? He was in the US. So I met with him at Omega a couple different times. I've been on multiple mentorships with him, like year long mentorships that I've been doing, you know, over the past couple of years. So I spent a lot of time with him. Haven't made it to the UK yet. We were supposed to go, you know, when 2020 hit. And of course, that didn't happen. So, you know, planning on making it over there, hopefully sometime soon. But yeah, he's really definitely a great person to check out. Amazing medium. Awesome. So we'll have to check out Tony. And um, people are just, I mean, going with the question. Sometimes people are a little quiet where they were when we were listening yeah. to music, but people are going. What I find interesting, and I have to bring this question up. So my cat is alive, but he has anxiety issues. Like, why would cats, like, what what is that about? And how could we help cats with anxiety or depression issues, I guess? Well, it really depends on the situation, but I do do a lot of work with animals and like behavioral problems. And usually, I mean, I can't say particularly for this Ellen's cat here, the question she's asking, but a lot of times when something's going on in your life and you might be having issues with anxiety, a lot of times our animals might mirror that back to us to be like hey i'm seeing this is what's going on like you're nervous so it's making me nervous that's right of thing so right. sometimes they will do that and sometimes it could be other things like i've had you know i had a client there was a dog and he would start going crazy at a certain time of night just barking at nothing and then when i connected with the animal and was doing the reading i found out there was another spirit animal that had passed that was in the house and this dog was like, I don't know who you are and why are you in my house? And he was freaking out. And so once we sort of settled that and we figured out who it was, you know, we talked, the, I, I had the client talk to the dog and be like, look, it's okay. It's just spot from, you know, whenever who used to live here before and kind of explained to the dog what the situation was. And the dog was like, oh, okay, I get it. And so he would still look and sort of like connect because animals are so much more connected than we are. And you know that. Um, but it's sort of like explaining things to the person to try to help their animal. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I know that every medium, like we all work a little bit different. We all yeah. work a little, we all experience things a little bit different. So I guess when people, um, what my experience with animal communication is not so much working one-on-one -on -one with animals, but it's the, the spirit of the loved one that comes through, they bring the animal through with them and then they kind of transmit like what the animal kind of wants to convey. But for me, it's kind of like, I get that sense from the animal, but for me, it's not like they're a cartoon and they talk to me like, you know, the, your grandmother or mom is talking to me. I don't get the same types of impressions. And so I don't know if it's the same for you or you actually like physically meet with animals and like work with them. Well, it's interesting because, you know, before I started doing this work, I would think, of course, you know, you need to meet with the animal in person. And, you know, occasionally I do if I'll do a fair, sometimes I'll have like a really big animal fair, sometimes I'll do that. But for the most part, everything is remote and especially with COVID. Um, and so what I do is I tap into the animal's energy, whether they're living or crossed over the same way that I would do with a person. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's very much the same. Um, and the way that I work is I'm very clairvoyant. So, you know, a lot of times if you're having a session with me, I spend the whole time looking off to my left because that's where spirit is sort of dropping in images and pictures and things like that. And so I'm seeing and they'll show me something. Like, for example, there was a cat that I was doing a reading on the cat had crossed and the cat kept showing me energetically a picture of a blueberry. And I was like, okay, you know, and the, the animals and people, as you know, will show you the weirdest things. And you're yeah. kind of like, okay, I've just got to, I'm just the medium. I'm just yeah. the person in the middle. 
So, um, so I talked to the client. I'm like, well, he showed me a blueberry. I don't know if that makes sense. If you'd like to eat blueberries, I don't know, because I'm not telling my story. And then the woman kind of broke down and said, you know, well, before I got him, that used to be his name. His name was Blueberry. Oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. And then when I got him, (laughs) like, I changed his name to something else. So it's like, oh, okay. So that makes sense. And um, that's sort of how I work. And that's how I work with people, too, the same way. Yeah. And what's bringing up to my mind is that, for me, the difference for me is that I get a lot of medical intuitive stuff when the animals okay. come through. So, cause I'm also a medical intuitive. So I will get sensations about like a smell or something like if, mm-hmm. if, they, if I could smell their breath, like if they had digestive issue or yeah. I'll get like a, um, an image, I get a lot of clairvoyant images, like their paw bleeding or something, but yeah. I'll see a lot of like medical stuff. And um, it's interesting because with people, there's such a different transitional process that I see going on with pets. It does feel like they stay with, they stay with the families for a little while. Like they sometimes just will stay with you for a little while before they kind of move over to the other side. And it's like, you get that impression on your chair with your, your cat or dog used to sit, or you yeah. like after one of my cats passed, like I usually don't hear things, you know, audibly, but I heard meowing, you know, you know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of like, you know, and so a lot of people are asking questions. Um, and I was going to wait till the third segment to get into these. But if you see anything that you'd like, people are so interactive tonight. If you see anything that you'd like to me to bring up on the screen and connect with anybody or answer any of these questions people are having, but they're just coming through crazy. So I don't want to wait till the end of the show to bring them up. Um, are you seeing anything you're drawn to? Yeah, anything like there's the question about uh, the dog is looking at spirit. How can I tell if the dog is seeing the spirit? Okay, do you know who that was? Do you know who that Uh, was? Lojo Matthews. Lojo, here we are. Oh, yeah. I call her Lojo. She's here every week. That's her nickname, like kind of like J-Lo. She's Lojo. Oh, nice. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so Lojo, we're going to bring up your uh, your question and um, see what comes through. Yeah, I mean, in terms of this question, I think you have to sort of be tuned into the animal. I mean, clearly, if the dog is barking and there's sirens going down the street or he's barking at the cat, then, you know, he's probably not barking at spirit. But a lot of times clients will say to me, like, oh, my dumb dog, he's just staring at the wall and he's barking or so the cat, the same thing. So if there's nothing there, you can't perceive anything. And the dog, a lot of times, or the cat will be kind of staring into space and kind of being a little spaced out. Usually that's when they're connecting to spirit. And again, they can connect to animal spirits or people spirits. And just sort of to to go off your, the last thing you were talking about in terms of the animals sticking around a little longer mm-hmm. um, after they cross, I, I kind of think of that as like the last goodbye because that does happen many times after you lose a pet, you know, even if you're not intuitive or a medium, um, you know, you might see them kind of out of the corner of your eye, or again, you said the impression on the chair. And I always feel that's like the animal kind of sticking around to be like, you know, don't worry, I'm still around you. So it's kind of like their way of letting you know that they're okay. And they're still around. That is awesome. And you know, I have so many, so many questions. Um, But while I was like talking to you, and obviously, I'm trying to like, produce the show, and then I'm looking at the comments. um, The name Murphy is coming to me. And I always I usually don't connect when I'm like doing all this. But if anybody has a dog Murphy, that's alive or past, please put it in the comments. But I am getting something about a dog Murph or Murphy. I have no idea. So if you know somebody with that name or whatever, it's a weird name, but it is popping through. So I figured I'd just give it. Um, and I, I do have a question. Why does it seem, and I I have a lot of people who, um, come to me with this and I don't really know how to answer this question, but it seems like the animals that pass sometimes reincarnate sooner than like the average person. And it seems like people like lose their pet and then like they get the next pet or the next pet. And it's like, they're like, Oh my God, like that's, that's buddy or that's, that's it's the same personality or the same like is it possible that people that that cat or dog or horse or whatever is coming back into the next animal and how like how probable is that how often does it happen 
Well, that's a very good question. And people do ask that a lot, as you just said. Um, you know, in my experience, and everybody's a little bit different, but in my experience, I think the true reincarnation of the animal, especially say, you know, if you lost your dog in January and then you get a new one in March, is that the new, you know, is that the reincarnation? I don't know. I mean, everybody, again, looks at things in their own way. For me personally, what I find is when I connect with these animals is that the animals that have crossed over come back in spirit and kind of train the new animal. So mm -hmm. if your new puppy is, you know, coming in and starts acting like your old dog that crossed over two months ago, usually in my experience, it's not a reincarnation unless there's been a certain amount of time. It's usually more that the the dog that has crossed is training the other dog and be like, hey, you know, this is what I used to do. And my person really likes it when I do this. And so if there's some of those same behaviors, it's because they're kind of, you know, getting a little cheat sheet from the dog <laughs> or the cat that crossed over. And that's what I find more than the true reincarnation. So you said a certain amount of time, but is it possible that a family could get the same spirit back? Like, is that something you've seen before? And what amount of time sure. is, is on average, do you see them coming of back? Of course, you know, like what I always tell people is I'm not God and I don't know. Everything. Right, right. Just so in I'm your experience. I'm working with my human self yeah. and that is imperfect. So I definitely have seen it. I mean, for me, when I really feel, because, you know, I go by my, my feeling of when I'm connecting with the animal. Um, and so I, I've seen the reincarnation a couple of times and usually it's like, four or five years. It's like a number okay. of years in my experience before I see what it feels like a reincarnation. But the other times it just like, again, it feels like they're getting a little bit of training from the animal that crossed. And that's really been my experience. Because I know a lot of people have hope that their dog or cat will come back into the next dog or cat. You know what of I mean? Course, so of like course. Of course. Well, yeah. You know, but they are in some way because they're your, your dog that crossed, your cat that crossed is still there. And is giving yes. the new animal that information. So in some ways, it's kind of the best of both worlds because you get your your old animal sort of training, and then you have your new dog, which has like their new things. So it's kind of both, you know, kind of oh, good. God. Well, thank you. That that's a great answer. It's something I didn't even think about that the dog was training the new dog or the cat was training the new yeah. cat. So let me just get over to the comments. Somebody did say, Miss Murphy, that was my Aunt Betty small dog. Okay, so for me. As a medium, I'm probably getting your Aunt Betty telling us that she has Murphy with her, okay? So I have to give you that message. The message came through. I just want you to know that both of them are okay. And something crazy is coming up for Valentine's Day for you That because I, I see the heart. I see Valentine's Day coming. And I just want to tell you that you're going to get a nice surprise and it's going to make you think of Murphy and your Aunt Betty. So it's something with the roses coming up too. So I have to let you know that. So this is for you, Lori. I know. Thanks, Roseanne, for telling me that Lori was confirming. But Murphy, yes. So the animal came through. Murphy came through. She's here. And I know I mentioned Buddy. Um, and some somebody had a Buddy too. But that was kind of an example. But sometimes the examples are the, the animals that might be coming in. So um, Mari, feel free. If you get some messages for anyone, feel free to just go off the cuff and something happens. Feel free to give the message too. Um, okay, sure. let's see. So I'm going to uh, get back to do a music break. We're going to do Jacob okay. and Mark's second song. And I'll ask, you know, Mari could go through the comments as we're doing um, the second song and see if there's anybody she'd like to connect in with or answer questions. And feel free to keep writing your questions so we can get through as many as we can. Okay. So thanks, Mari. We'll be, we'll be back with you in our, after, the, cool. after the song. Hi, guys. We're back. Hello. How are you? Very good. How are you doing? Good. How are you guys feeling after that first song? We're feeling good. It's nice to play again, you know? We haven't played in a while, so it's always nice to play with, with Mark. And we, we've, we've been playing for many years together, so it's always, it's always nice to kind of create that together. And so it's <laughs> usually um, for like a situation or like a an event or something that's unique um so it was nice to also hear what you were talking about with the with the uh in regards to the animals and uh that that made made a lot of sense to me um especially the uh the sp like the spirit guide type of like the tr training i never would have thought of that i know i i haven't thought of that i've been doing this 25 years and i didn't ever think of it that way and so you learn something new every day and it's just so interesting what our animal, our animal friends have to teach us. And you know what? I love to keep 
interviewing you guys, but we have an audio issue where like I'm people are hearing me. So I'm just gonna have you guys play. And yeah, then, speaking of animals, we were gonna do uh, one of Jacob's songs called Bird Song. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to put you guys in the spotlight. And I'm gonna mute myself. And you guys can go ahead with Bird Song. We would love to hear it. All right. So yeah, this is uh, this is off my album Hope here. This is the first track off the album called Bird Song. So. Hope you guys enjoy.
awesome. Bird song. You know what I'm going to do? I muted you while I'm talking and asking the question so I don't hear myself back. And then I'll unmute you so you can answer the question. There you go. So you guys are going to be on Insight Timer. The, dis the link to join Jacob and Mark on Insight Timer on Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is in the description of this video. So be there or be square. And you could purchase Jacob's music featuring Mark at jacobcolepercussion.com. A lot of you have been asking. So a lot of people that saw the show last time were like, they didn't think it could get any better from just Jacob being here. But now they see Mark and they're like, wow, this takes it up a whole other level. How long have you guys both been playing together? And do you find that there's an energy that happens between you that's healing for both of you? Yeah, I mean, we, we've... Uh... Well, we met kind of at the beginning of me and Kristen's relationship. So, I mean, at least going on 15, almost 15 years, probably, we've been playing music, at least known each other. Yeah. You know? yeah. I'd say we've at least been playing music for a dozen years now. Yeah, I mean, it's been kind of like one of those organic things where we just were, we, we knew we were fated to meet because we would hear about each other through... And we Christian, both, who we both knew. We both liked and other people. Like Ma Vishnu Orchestra and crazy jazz fusion bands. So we had that in common right off the bat. And then we formed a band called Rogue Chimp, actually. And uh, that's where we started playing, where I play I played drum set in it, and he played violin and synths, and my brother Zach played keyboards, and our, and we have a bass player, John Ventry. So uh, Rogue Chimp is a local, we were a local jazz fusion band and we played around the area and festivals. We even played at the Peach Music Festival the first year they had it. And uh, we traveled as far out as like... We traveled to, to, Ohio, the country, the, yeah. to Ohio, we traveled around the area and um, we were on WVAA a couple of times and stuff. Um, and then like this was, let's say 2012 when we, when the album Embark came out, Rogue Chimp Embark. So this is like going to be the 10th anniversary year. Wow. And we, we had never played these, this instrument at that time um, because Jacob didn't even have a hand. Yeah, hand. I didn't start playing. At some point though, you, you got it. I got to hand pan, into hand pans in 2014, the end of 2013. So in 2014, we were on WBIA, I think, maybe it was like 2016, but there was a tune that you wrote called Ison. I Ison. So we we then... Uh, Started incorporating yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually we wound up getting a gig at uh, the hospital with uh, a local kind of coordinated effort between... Uh, one of the hospice uh, services and the, the, the county and and the hospital so that there was this like three-way partnership where the doctors were taking surveys on our music and how it affected people, which it turned out it did have a, a measurable effect on the people that were, were li like they would be waiting outside the intensive care unit and Jacob and I were in the new guy singer facility in the breezeway right after it opened and Jacob would come, if you don't mind me, taking it for a minute, uh -huh. he would come with a new piece pretty much every week. And I would listen to it. A lot of times I would like just jam out with it. And uh, there were certain times that I just felt like, like with that one, it was such a, such a beautiful composition. I, I wanted to try to blend my sound with the hand pan. And in doing it, like he and I, we bonded on a whole nother level because we got to experience the effect that our music had. And also it was like Jacob was making this music Intuitively, I'm a, a good listener and I listen to music and I don't need to write it out or think it, in it like that, but that's kind of like how I write music out and that can sometimes be a, a barrier um, if you have a conception of something because it boxes it in, right? So Jacob's way of uh, uh, writing music, I think, is uh, coming from a pure, more intuitive place and he's just a naturally good uh, songwriter and this is the, it kind of evolved in that way that we had done all the other things together the, we had experienced what it was like to be in a, a band that played like, chaotic music and then this stuff was just like profoundly healing also I, what I noticed was that nobody had any uh, memory association with the music so there was no uh, you could say psychic or uh, or just uh, memory uh, attachments to it and it seemed like it allowed people to just kind of be in a, a tra traumatic situation without carrying that with them and also um, it 
distracted them. So I think that that had it's something they never heard before. That was just so beautiful, and that's actually yeah, that's actually where this this name came from. That the album Hope kind of came out of that those hospital sessions. We wrote all the songs during those hospital sessions, and that's how the album Hope came about. And this was before the pandemic, and we saw a lot of people die that would go in there that we knew, and it was just like just uh, really uh, eye opening, um, and it made us kind of take a. Um, when when Jacob got invited to go to this conference uh, with some of the best percussionists in the world, they even had some indigenous. Uh, there was somebody from uh, Australia who's an Aboriginal, and there were great percussionists from all over. And he, I, he, it was such an honor. I got to join him. He asked me to come with him. Um, and Jacob's always uh, recognized the the uniqueness of our duo, and even my favorite violinists in the world. Uh, that I admire and in, in communication with have commented about what they said, what was that? Like that's special, <laughs> that duo that you have there. So I always like making music with Jacob because it's like I can kind of surrender to the music and I I, 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 I have fun exploring it. His tabla playing, he studied with Zakir Hussein, that I could hear that in, I think Jacob's got a really cr gr nice approach to the instrument. So he is one of the, the, the in, in the handpan community in the world, he's recognized as one of the top and uh, top handpan players, and he he plays it in his own unique way. And uh, I love that you've just kind of, I loved the bio I, the, that uh, I, I feel that this music is transformative for for us. And I don't want to try to cheapen it with words, um, but it's definitely something that. Uh, it heals myself, so that's I'm, I, I hope know, it can heal hey, people that hear it. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's it's deep. And, and we've got more to make, so. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. God willing, right? Well, thanks, guys, for that awesome um, telling all that. I, I'm envisioning that you guys have actually helped cross people over by playing at the hospital and hospice unit. So I'm assuming that this music has helped people, which I didn't even know you guys had this experience, but maybe helped people to feel safe and calm and relaxed, able to move over to the other side. You're, you're, you're right about that, though. There were a few times when people transitioned, and we, I, I could kind of feel it happening. That wow. actually That actually was the, the last piece we're, we're going to play, uh, acceptance. There was something that happened right around that time, or, and that's kind of how that piece um, evolved. Yeah, we're going to end the night with a song called Acceptance, which is about that, actually, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to interview you about that experience before you guys do acceptance because everybody's interested, I'm sure, in what you experienced. So I am going to let you guys take a little break. I'm going to bring Mari back on. We're going to do some connections, maybe some readings, and then uh, we'll bring you guys back on to, I mean, I didn't expect such an amazing end to the show, but this is going to be an amazing end to the show and it's going to bring it all together. So remember, you guys want to grab their album, which has artwork and an actual CD. Go to jacobcolepercussion.com and we will see you guys in a couple of minutes. All right. All right. So let me get the banner off here. All right. Let me transition here. We're going to bring back. Psychic medium and animal communicator. Did I pronounce your last name correctly when I said it before, or did I mess it up? You did. You did a pretty oh, good okay. job. It's very impressive. Yeah. Okay. So, no, no problem there. Carta Genova. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Is it it's Italian? I know. Is it Italian? It is. Okay. It is. Well, so yeah. A lot of us mediums are Italian. I'm almost 100% myself. So. <laughs> That's why you I'm can't talking tell. with the hands, I guess, you know? <laughs> well, you said Mari like calamari, so how could I, like, mess that exactly. up, right? Exactly, yeah. So, um, so you guys have asked a lot of questions. While Jacob and Mark were playing their beautiful music, Mari was tuning in to some of the comments, and I hope some of you are still here because she wants to connect with a few of you. And if I get any messages, mine are kind of like, if you say, hey, can you connect with my mom or my dad? It's like, doesn't work for me like that. It's kind of like not the drive through at McDonald's. If yeah, I get yeah. something, I'll let you know. I'm kind of a receiver. I don't go after spirit. I'll just open up and whoever wants to talk, I kind of, whoever's the loudest and the most Italian usually gets yeah, there first. Exactly. <laughs> so um, I will leave it up to you. Um, before we do that, just so I don't forget, um, if you want to connect with Mari, go to 
MediaMari.com. And I know you wanted to talk about your summit as well. That's coming up. Yeah, well, it ran last week. It's called the Healer Summit. And no, you don't need to be a healer to be a part of it. But it's basically like 30 experts, including me, uh, experts in all different modalities, whether it's mediumship or healing or Qigong or therapists. And basically, everybody gives a little talk. And then they everyone also has a free gift like a meditation or a certain percentage off their reading or a free reading or something. So it's very cool. And the guy that is putting it together, Peter Van Twyver, is actually running it again. And it was free to begin with. And now he's running it free again this coming weekend. So if that's something that you're interested in taking advantage of new healing methods or finding out more about intuition or you know compassion fatigue or Qigong or energy healing or all these really cool things, then you might want to sign up for the summit. Again, it's totally free. And it's uh, I think it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, maybe into Monday. And um, you can go to my website, mediumar.com, click the link, sign up, and you'll get all the info. Now, I know your book through April of 2022 or I 23, am. or it's 22 or 23. No, it's, it's still 22. Oh, 20, okay. 23, that would be really, yeah, that'd be something. <laughs> so if you do want, you know, obviously we can't get to everyone's personal reading tonight. Um, but if you do want a session with Mari, please go to her website. She has a lot of, she has a book. She's got the summit. She's got a lot of stuff to connect with. So please um, go there and check it out. And of course, if you guys are here watching Jacob or Mark or Mari, please support the show by going and liking us on Facebook or subscribing on YouTube. We have all different sorts of hosts and music and it's kind of like, Jay Leno with mediums. <laughs> we always take music breaks and, <laughs> cool. you know, have a good time. Uh, so, you know, give us a lot, you know, follow, follow um, the Facebook medium, Marissa Liza Pell, or go to our YouTube, which is Connection Beyond and subscribe to our channel. So you always get notified when the new lounge is coming up. You could always watch the replay if you can't make it on Friday nights. So without further ado, and I know I've said this like 5 million times, um, Mari, I know you've picked out some people from the chat. Uh, who would you like me to bring up on the screen? Well, it's interesting. I picked out a couple of people and made notes because I'm old and my brain can only hold so much information. <laughs> but I just saw that Chris Sully uh, just posted a comment. This one? Um, yes, that one. Exactly. Okay. Um, and what I wanted to say about that is that what I usually find in my sessions is that when, you know, when you're ready for another dog, your dog that crossed will lead you to the new dog. That's usually what happens because they know like, you know, you need a certain amount of time to heal and you need to sort of get things in perspective. So it, it's not so much you pushing yourself and feeling like, oh no, I need to get another dog. But usually you get sort of an intuitive hit that tells you like, yeah, I think I'm ready. And then, you you know, whether you go to the pound or a breeder, you know, I'd recommend, you know, going to a shelter myself. Um, you usually get led to a certain animal. And that's because I feel like you're being influenced by the animal that crossed over because they know you and they know what you need. And so I usually sort of wait for that intuitive type of feeling is what I tell my clients. And then when you get it, then you know that you're being led and sort of go with that. And when you see the dog that's supposed to be your dog or cat for that matter, you'll know and just sort of trust that gut feeling and go with it. Awesome. And while you were reading Chris, I was connecting in. Also, I got a message from a cat that looks like kind of like an orange tabby. Um, and I'm, I'm seeing like Morris the cat. I don't know if you guys remember in the 80s and 90s, there was that Morris the cat commercial. So I feel like this cat was a big boy. Okay. I don't know if his name was Morris, but he looked like Morris cat and he had a little crooked end to his tail. So I'm getting something about a cat that looks like Morris cat, or maybe your cat's name is Morris. Sometimes I get an image, sometimes I get a name. So that's just coming through. So I'll just put that out there and go back to Mari for whoever she wants to connect with. Well, I don't want to be a spirit hog, but you could be connecting to my beloved kitty. He was like 25 oh, no. pounds and he was orange and he looked, you know, like oh. Morris and, you know, his tail would come up kind of like a question mark. So, oh my God. Well, know. maybe you were getting, supposed to get a message. Oh, and somebody I would else love is a message from him. I miss, you know, I'm human too. And I miss him so much. Well, well you know what? That's maybe I, I was supposed to give you a message tonight and you didn't even expect it. Yeah. <laughs> who knows who knows but then bernie's saying that's my boy too so how does that make sense to you bernie sometimes we could be getting messages for a couple people right for both but, exactly yeah. 
So I'm yeah. just going to put it out there. And Bernie, is your cat's name Morris or does it look like, does, does he look like Morris the cat? Just let us know. All right, Mari. And then I'll come back to you, Bernie, once I get your answer. But Mari, who would you like to talk to next? Well, it was interesting because I had written Bernie down as well. You know, oh, interesting. Was, I know, because I have him in my notes here. Because he was talking about getting a sign, any type of sign that, you know, that he could possibly get. And I was sort of feeling for him that it almost feels to me like he's been suffering in silence. There's some piece about, you know, sort of being sad, but holding it in on the inside and not really taking advantage of people that might be around you or, you know, people that could help you. That's sort of the feeling that I'm getting. And I'm also getting endings for you. So I don't know whether it's relationship job, it feels like that things are ending. And that, of course, that means that new things will be starting. So there's some piece about that as well that I'm hearing from spirit. But what I'm also getting from them and that it's really important to be able to reach out to others. And I am sort of feeling like that maybe Bernie, you might be more inward and not really, or even if you're out with people, not really wanting to rely on the help of others. And, you know, sometimes we need to do that. And sometimes we need to make that connection and sort of risk to make that connection. And I think that just might be something important for you to hear and, you know, wanted to add that. And if we both share the same spirit connection with the kitty, <laughs> then that's amazing. So I miss my boy. So. Well, I have to give another detail of something else I'm seeing with this Morris the cat connection. I'm seeing like somebody lifting the cats, like, like puff on the one side and the one tooth or fang and pointing into the mouth. So I wonder if there was like a dental issue, you either Bernie or Mari, where there was a tooth issue or like a dental issue or something in the mouth was like causing problems for him. Cause this is a boy dog, a boy cat. This is a male yeah. cat. Yeah. So there's something maybe an infection. I don't know. Something dental is coming up. So I don't know if Bernie understands that or Mari understands that, but that's, he's trying to show me that one tooth. I have no idea. Maybe it was cracked. I don't know. Yeah, okay. no, I'm, I can't take that, but maybe Bernie can because my baby was sadly very young and never. Oh, li I know it's terrible. Oh. People think that because we do this work, somehow we're immune to the grief, but that's right. just not true. It's not true. We're like I said, we're still human, and it's still hard, even if we can connect with them. It's interesting because I don't know about you, but like because I'm so emotionally involved to the people that I know who have passed um it's just like i'm grieving like a normal person because i can't connect to my own people it's just like there's too much emotion there's too much yeah. i can ask them for signs and stuff but i can't get that you know all that validation and information because it's hard for me to be objective yeah so we exactly. grieve too just because we're mediums we grieve like normal people yep 100 percent. yeah okay very true so bernie's saying about his brother there might there was a tooth issue so I'm thinking that's what he's talking about. So maybe he's talking about the other cat. All right. So yeah. is is there, Mari, are you connected with anyone else? Yeah, I was I was going to my list here. There was a Matthew Magda I saw. Matthew Magda. Magda, sorry. Um, that's okay. It was a question about do animals have a higher self? I don't know if you, it might be a little yes, further back I have there it right in the list here. there. There you go. So you're so good with the technical stuff. Clearly <laughs> I am not. But, you know, it's okay. But, can't be good at everything. That's what I tell my kids, you know, what do you want? Um, so in terms of that piece of the higher self, I mean, I think animals really are a higher self in a lot of ways. And I do a lot of work with animals. I do a lot of training and classes and mentorships on animal communication and a lot of the reason why animals are here is to sort of help us humans live the best lives that we can and to be our higher selves. So in terms of the animals having a higher self, I feel like they kind of already are because think about it, animals aren't like jealous or they're not like trying to take revenge on the other animals. Like it just doesn't work that way. Animals are really just about love and they're really here to help us and to show us that that's really what we can be too, if we want to be our higher self version. And so it's really important to sort of recognize that when animals come here, they're kind of already on that higher level and they're here to help us try to get there in our own way, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Totally. Anyone else you're drawn to before we bring back Jacob and Mark? Um, let's see. 
see. No, I think we, oh no, sorry. There was another person on top of my list here. If we have time, um, Jody Gummerman, I think. I can't read my own handwriting. Oh my goodness. Jody Gummerman. How far up did you I see? I think it was, or... you know, probably right towards the beginning of our okay. break. So probably a little see. bit further up. Um, but she was talking yes. about her dog that crossed unexpectedly. Um, um, let me see if I can find her. Yeah. She just said she'd love to talk about her dog. This yeah. Jody, or is there a different comment? I think it was probably a different comment, but she was yeah. basically saying like that her dog crossed, you know, unexpectedly. Oh, wait, that, that's and, not the right know, person. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. You know, but mm. if she's still listening, I was sort of picking up that um, what it felt to me is oh. like I was feeling the heart stop. So I was feeling almost like a very quick sort of unexpected situation. It almost feels like whether there was like a blood clot or something, because I'm just feeling like he was going strong and everything was fine. And then boom, he was gone. So, and I am not a medical intuitive, so that's not really my area, but they are showing me the heart and I'm feeling like there's like a blockage or something that sort of went up into the one of the ventricles and like, and then it was over. And so that's what I'm feeling what happened to him. And I know you know, I've lost animals suddenly and that's like the worst. I mean, it's bad when they die anyway, but when they die suddenly, because at least if you have a, you know, one of my cats was 21 and I was very sad when he died, of course, but like I was kind of prepared, you know, like I knew that unfortunately they're not going to live forever. Um, but my other animal had crossed very suddenly. It's, it's heartbreaking. It's devastating. And so I completely understand Jody, you know, that, that feeling and it's, it's really, it's really hard, but do know, I think one of the other comments were talking about like, are they okay? The animals or the people that cross? Uh -huh. I mean, once you cross and you know this, Marissa is like, it's really just about love. The other side is all about love. There's no like vengeance. People aren't sick. You're not holding on to anything. Like, you know, you're mad at your brother or something over on the other side. <laughs> you're really, you're just your spirit and your spirit is just all about love. And this, you know, body that we're in, whether it's furry or human, this is kind of like the outfit that we're wearing while we're going around the earth this time. And when, you know, you die and you come back, I believe in reincarnation, you get another outfit, whether it's a person or an animal. Um, and then that's how we go around and that's how our soul develops. So yes, everybody on the other side, human or animal are doing fine because they've sort of shed all of that humanness and uh, they are just love and spirit. That's awesome. I'm I'm trying to pay attention to you, but then I'm getting stuff coming through to. It's I know like, it's it's like it's a you know occupational hazard. Right? Yeah, right. It, so <laughs> it's funny. I love when mediums say like, "I'm not medical intuitive," because I'm feeling that you are. Like you have those abilities, and like you That's are good fun. at it. <laughs> so it's kind of like Thank you. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not this. I, I always told myself I'm not a medium. Like uh, I, how is John Edward yeah. doing? And I was like, that's what I was. But I feel like you had to do have that ability. It's kind of like when you were sitting there, you said that something was like, no, 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 tell her she is. <laughs> so I'm oh, like, that's okay. Funny. That's funny. Well, so, you never know. Yeah, there's there's something I feel like you're gonna be finding that there's that that part of the healing work that you're doing is gonna be almost including that like tuning in to maybe, maybe animals that are living and you're picking up on some of the things that maybe are imbalances or something, but I'm getting that you you will like there's there's something activating in that with you however Very you cool. use it you use it but um that's coming up and also i get a lot of random things so i don't know what this name is um but it's like tully maybe the last name tully T hmm. um tully or tubby or tuddy but it's not like a normal like teddy or rusty or it's like tully tuddy tully tully maybe the last name tully I don't know if anyone knows anybody with that last name or an animal that kind of sounds like that. Let me know. I get a lot of random stuff and I'm also tuning into Jennifer Kent here. And it's funny because I was looking at that question and I'm thinking no, no grandfather. Right. So the dog is almost with an older generation, a person in an older generation. So I don't know if he was connected to somebody that was maybe connected to dad, but I get a sense of buddy hanging out with grandpa and not dad. So just so you know, that's just what I'm feeling. All right, Mari, anything else? Well, I see Bernie putting a lot of comments in there about the cat. And I just want to say that I know that how hard it is to lose an animal. I mean, aside from being a medium, I'm a therapist as well. So oh, a lot wow. of times when people, 
I am, you know, I, I, I kept up my license. I don't work exclusively in that way. But, you know, a lot of times when people come to me, it's like that's part of the session. Not that we're doing therapy, but it's more about the healing. And Like healing you're a real life grief. therapist? Like you're a real life? I am life. a real life therapist. For real? Yeah. For like, real. I, I have my what? MSW. Yeah, I yeah, I got my license. And I, for like a million years, I won't tell you how old I am. It's a secret. Okay. 29 every year. So wait, I have to ask this. Are you still like actively practicing therapy or do you combine the therapy with the mediumship and is that allowed in the practice like for you is like what they allow in the I don't know what who they are but right like, exactly well and for that reason I'm not really practicing therapy because I'm not sure if you know talking to spirits would really be covered <laughs> by blue cross so right. you know, yeah that's what I was wondering that's part of that but you know but I do maintain my license so I do all the continuing it and everything just to sort of you know might as well to keep it up just in case I decide I want to go back to it at some point but I just mean in terms of sitting with me like if you have a session with me there's always some of that healing involved just because you know that's my background. I'm trained as a therapist. And so I'm sort of able to see things, you know, in a therapeutic way, you know, as well as connecting with spirit and seeing it. So I, I always feel like when I was doing therapy, I was always connecting with spirit as well. I just never thought about it that right. way. Right. You know, right. It wasn't so you're concrete. sitting there be like doing some CBT and like all of a sudden, like somebody's mom standing there, but like, she's lying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, just exactly. kidding. And it's like, you know, my, my psychic humor, but <laughs> you no, know, I know, I know. Mediums, but, you, know, like, you get like a feeling, you know, you get a feeling and you just, you have a knowingness and, you know, for people out there that don't know, it's like the way that you connect is like you, you have a knowingness, you have a feeling about things. I see things. Sometimes they'll draw something, they'll draw a word for me or I'll hear yeah. stuff. So all of those things sort of come together and that's how we're sort of connecting to the other side and to spirit. And I think that that's happens a lot more than you think. So what was your specialty as a therapist? Were you like a CBT person or were you like a trauma person? Like, what, like what, what was your, I'm always so interested in therapists. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I worked a lot with the chronically mentally ill and I really, you know, enjoyed working with that population, like, you know, schizophrenia, bipolar. And I also worked a lot in psych hospitals. This is when I lived in California. And so we, you know, I'd work in a, in a, like a private locked facility and, you know, some people would be like, Oh my God, that's so crazy. But you know, I don't know. I, I always thought it was really interesting and it never really scared me because, you know, yes, they may have issues, you know, everybody who doesn't have an issue, right? Um, so there's people that, you know, in the facility might have some type of psychiatric issue, but like they're, they just need love. They just need someone to connect with them. And that's really, you know, what was my driving force. So it was really now, great. I do have this question for you because sometimes I know this isn't all the time, right? This isn't all the time. But sometimes people have, <laughs> excuse me, have anxiety and depression or schizophrenia and they're really connecting to spirit. Would yeah. you be able to differentiate between the people that were having those sensations and it was connection versus people who had like a real chemical imbalance? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, when I worked in the hospital, because I also worked just like in regular clinics with like, we like to say the worried well, just, you know, regular people having issues. Um, but I mean, if you're in a locked unit, like one of the units I worked in was for, you know, multiple personality, which they don't call that anymore. And these were very serious, you know, things happening like people trying to cut their arm off and like serious issues so in a case like that you know that would definitely be a mental illness situation and not mm -hmm. just like i'm talking to spirit because if you're getting into self-harm then that's a whole different level so i mean i can't say that because the people that would be in the facility they were there for two weeks a month or you know or longer um and so usually in that case there is a some type of serious mental illness going on but i i just thought it was really interesting and i above everything, like to help people. And that's why mm -hmm. I do this work and want to help people heal, you know, whatever method it is. So that's why I do it. Awesome. Fascinating. I could take this to a whole other, another hour long oh, conversation. We'll take it <laughs> offline. <laughs> so we have to get back to Jacob and Mark. And I thank you for staying an extra little bit of extra time, Mari. And just uh, again, if you would like to follow Mari, please go to mediamari.com. She's got the healing summit. She's got her books. She's got sessions. You guys can connect with your animal babies and spirit and maybe medical intuition in the future. Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to keep you on our screen for our last song. If you don't mind, just sure. hang out with me and we're going to bring back Jacob 
and Mark. You guys could still have a drink. It's fine. Um, let's see. All right. You guys, you take a minute. Let's see uh, who else we got. Uh, thanks. Everybody's thanking you. Everybody's having a good time. Beth Ann, yes, Sully could be something like Tully. So that could make sense there. You got Tahoe and Buddy. You got them all. So, but Tully, I, I was really getting that Tully name or Tutty. I don't know. Kind of weird. All right, Jacob, are you there? Hello. Hello. So you guys want to tell us, oh, you guys want to tell us your story about how this last song came about as you were trans, I, I, I could be misunderstanding this, but you were transitioning somebody from the other side, had an experience and the song came about, or am I, am I way off base here? Well, the song, I mean, we kind of started playing it in the hospital setting. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have certain things I, I remember about it, but like you first, just because well, we, we I'm curious have a, as to what you remember around this. We also have a, a music video of this song, which is, you, you guys should check it out. It's very, very beautiful, filmed up uh, my mother's land, uh, 44 it's acres, beautiful. and uh, we have a drone, some drone footage, and it's a real music video where we're like fake playing the instruments. In like 10 degree weather, yeah, yeah. yeah. or maybe it was and, neg uh, negative 10. My dad is playing bass in the video, and I'm playing drum kit. Drum kit, and I'm playing this instrument, which is not a hand pan. Uh, I, this is called a, a rav drum from Russia. It's a tongue pan, and it's like a hand pan, but um, they're, they're even more meditative when you get a nice. The sustain is longer, and it's very deep. So this is a rav drum I'll be playing for this song called Acceptance, and. Um, for me, this this song is is yeah kind of written in the hospital about accepting, uh, passing on basically you know the acceptance of of something like that which is pretty profound, um, and maybe Mark has a different yeah when we were when we played through it uh, I don't remember. Uh, who it was that transitioned uh, I know our, our friend Mike who had been in Rogue Ship, Mike Nasser his, his father had been in the hospital um, there was a guy that transitioned that I, I have a recording on my SoundCloud um, that I wrote it like I did it when Jacob was at break he probably never even heard it uh, we would take breaks and one of us would play for like 20 minutes while the other person went got a little snack on these three hour jobs but in particular, the melody part that's like Bobby doo doo dee da da. I was trying to come up with something for this. All the stuff had happened. I think it it was right around the time when it might have been when Mike's dad was still there, and like all of a sudden he got sick. Um, but my dad had passed a year to the day of the day that you named it acceptance. And this melody, I was thinking of my dad, uh, and I knew he liked the Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon soundtrack and like Yo-Yo Ma's playing. So um, for some odd reason, this like cello line almost came to me. And that was kind of the string arrangement that I uh, had like, it, that's where that was inspired from, the, like that little melodic uh, aspect of this song was from that and and I and I and after playing it I remember turning to Jacob and saying you know I I, I feel like I, I finally can accept that my dad's gone and uh, mm. and he said maybe we should call it acceptance and I, no. and I said yeah so it's one of my favorite songs and, and, and the melody that Mark does on on the album and uh, is just it really it's spe something special it really is it's a powerful tune. I don't know how you came up with it, but uh, I don't know either. I don't write my own music. That's the best part, right? We don't. We don't have to know. Now, have you guys had any experiences where you were in the hospice unit or at the hospital where you saw somebody that passed or had an experience where you felt somebody passing or you had some sort of supernatural experience? Yeah, uh, there was. Uh, I mean, I play for viewings. Uh, oh, wow. a few Times a week. So I've, okay. I've also kind of embraced being a kind of a, I knew I wasn't ever going to be a priest, but because I was playing music in the churches and I, I played in the synagogues and uh, I've, I've studied uh, shamanism 
and we were, as I was saying earlier, Jacob and I were at this conference where they were basically saying like, you are shamans for your local areas and you, you know, mm-hmm. like a modern day shaman is somebody who just provides, the, um, in, a, in, a, in a sonic sense, we're just, we just have to show up and play and then whatever's supposed to happen, happens. And if you're in tune, you just kind of know what to play and it can help animals, it can help the land. Um, and it can help release memories in, in, in my belief. But um, on a hands-on experience, to answer your question very qu- briefly, yeah, there was one time when I was going down uh, Pittston Avenue and I looked back and I could see this, the, the sun was just penetrating through the clouds because it's cloudy here a lot. <laughs> and I had just turned off my old Nokia phone. Um, and I did... No, I'm sorry, I, I just turned it on, and as I turned it on, it's ringing, and it's my cousin, he said, Mark, get up to the, the nursing home, your aunt's dying, your great aunt's dying, Edna, and I said, oh, I know, I, I, how did I know, and I was on Pittston Avenue, I, I could see where the clouds were, they were where she was, I turned around, I zoomed up, I was there in like five minutes, I went and nobody knew what to do, um, my family was there, everybody was just, I didn't know what to do either, but at the same time, I'm, I'm fearless, and I... I also have learned, I've been, uh, I'm grateful enough that I had some training from some um, different spiritual people and Native American elders. And so I just said to my aunt, I, I knew that nobody touched her. She had a stroke. Everybody, nobody thought that she could even communicate. And I just remember, I don't know, I don't know, I have no idea how I did this, but I just, I just stroked the back of her head and I said, Edna, we're all here, your sister's here, we love you very much. I'm so grateful for you. I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for you helping raise me. I know she had a tough mm-hmm. life. The love of her life like left her when she was 22. She never got over it. She just decided to move up to Scranton. My grandmother, and she grew up in Virginia. Um, and before the war, my grandma met my grandpa during the war and she came up here. So she had a kind of a lighthearted, uh, really, really, my grandma was absolutely brilliant, a wonderful lady and Edna was, she had a relationship to the birds and she would always talk about the birds were talking to her and she was talking to this. So it was a, it was really interesting. I just said, and I'm so grateful for you. We all are so grateful. We wouldn't be who, uh, who we were. We love you. It's okay. You don't have to hold on any longer. I'm so sorry. I was not able to come up and see you as much as I told you I would. Please forgive me. I love you. It's okay. You can let go. As soon as I said that, she took in her last breath. And I've never experienced this before, mm-hmm. but people have told me this has happened to them as well. The last breath, it's like a... <gasps> and I saw a complete release. She understood mm-hmm. what I was saying. So I understood right then and there that, okay, so... Uh, I don't have, I don't necessarily know, but um, I, I I think that when people have a stroke, a lot of times they could be in and out, um, or they may just not might not be conscious. But you ha- it was like with animals, babies, children, if if we just speak to people uh, um, and communicate to them without judgment and just in, lo- in a loving way, I think that penetrates. And I in that moment, I told her what she needed to hear which was, you could, you know, you can go. And I was so shocked by that. I actually like just left and I, and I ran into the woods and I, I thought her spirit was with me and running. And like, mm-hmm. I was like, people they probably think, would think I'm insane, but like, this is such an incredibly amazing um, life. And I, I just was so grateful that I was able to somehow find my way there. And I knew, that that was a stepping stone for me in, in understanding that I had I had a role to play because I became familiar with death and I faced my own death many times, and mm-hmm. I came back to Scranton because universe. I. This is a kind of cool story, real quick. Um, I was in Vermont. I had moved up there. It just didn't seem like it was working out because I was remote, far away from the city, and I could sense that my grandparents were needed me to be back here. They didn't tell me this, but they were getting older, and nobody else had a kind of schedule that was conducive to helping them out. They were in the 90s. So I was able to come back to Scranton, connect to Jacob right after I came back, start the band, and be able to be there for my grandparents, and become their friends again 
and learn all this great wisdom from that generation mm -hmm. and um, be able to uh, to share and redeem myself by doing well around here and uh, mm -hmm. making a difference and, and playing for these things and they're, they're sacred um, and they help maybe what I've experienced at the viewings is a lot of times it's the people that are there that they're having a tough time letting go and uh, so if you can get people's minds out of the way it allows for somebody to be able to go to where they're going to go they go back to the divine light a lot, you know most of the time i don't have to get involved at all um i don't try to overstep my boundaries i just try to ask what's right and perfect and it's just strange that um a lot of times i intuitively guess what music to play or they just know at the funeral homes to Hey, you know, this guy can play whatever you want or whatever you think that they would have wanted to hear and then we'll incorporate that and it's like a celebration of life. It, it, it's turned the whole the vibe around completely. Uh, so I, I just love that music can do that and I realized that just by getting out of the way and just showing up and playing and not talking too much. Uh, which is a big joke with my mom and I, you know, she's like, you love to talk, don't you? Um, <laughs> yeah, but I love to share that because I think it's something that everybody, everybody can relate to. And it's important to understand that there are aspects to us that are consciousness that somehow or another people, even, um, when they have Alzheimer's or they're disconnected, um, from like, you know, if there's something wrong, music can bring people back, um, for, and, and it's an incredible thing. Sometimes music that people know, um, and uh, sometimes, so I'll throw in like something, somebody's like, could you play with Devil One Town to Georgia? And I'll be like, sure, you know. Like, yeah, it's a rarity, but pe people, that's how people used to celebrate, um, you know, death with, with life as well. And, and I know that it's different in each culture mm -hmm. across the world, but it's kind of something that, I think we all share going back and looking back into history. It's something that was understood and was part of our culture. And I think it's going to kind of come back around. I just want to be able to share this with as many musicians as possible. So they know you should go to your funeral parlor and, and hustle them and say, Hey, you know, if you, if you can play any kind of music, then you should be doing this It's a service to humanity and to your own soul. It's helped me redeem myself. Um, mm. uh, God is, granted me the opportunity to continue to live in this planet because I've put my heart and soul into every single note uh, and tried to make a difference um, in that way. So it's an honor to be able to, to share that with you. I'm not going to take up any more time because it, it's so beautiful, the music that we make together. Uh, I don't want to cheapen it, but this was a part of the, that healing process and it was a big part of it because losing my father, um, it was something that I... Um, I'm grateful that he died knowing that I had, I had accomplished something and that he was so proud of me and that he no longer was worried about what other people thought. He's like, you know, they can think whatever they want. I love them. You know, that was the whole thing. And if it wasn't for my partner, Lily, he wouldn't have, that wouldn't have happened to him. But I mean, you know, a lot of times we're faced with challenges. We just have to have faith. Like we can't control everything. So, um, that that's acceptance right yeah man. awesome thanks, thanks so much for thanks. sharing and we would love to hear acceptance and we are gonna thanks everybody for staying a little bit longer we uh we appreciate it and we hope you enjoyed everybody's story and connection and in northeast pa everybody's home anyway because of our ice storm so Hope we provided a service for everybody tonight and you guys had a good time and your energy is feeling great. All right, guys, take it out with acceptance. And this is uh, off the, the album Hope here as well. This is um, the, seventh tr the seventh track off of disc, disc one. It's a two disc album. Hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for having us.
Thank you. Wow. Wow, awesome. awesome. Thank you. You guys, you guys are doing such, you do, it, it's just, that song was, I have you guys mute it just so you know, so it's not echoing, but um, you guys, that was so moving and just, I don't know, it's just penetrating. That was haunting and moving and beautiful and all in the same sense. Um, yeah, I don't even know what to say. Um, I'm just going to promote you guys a little bit more here. Uh, let me bring up the banner and we're going to promote everybody before they go. So everybody knows how to get a hold of everybody here. Uh, all right. So we've got Jacob and Mark in the top left-hand corner. We got Mari, medium Mari, and me, Marissa, and intuitive medium Marissa Liza Pell. And I'm just going to put up everybody's promos before we go here. Uh, so... We have world percussionist Jacob Cole and international jazz violinist Mark Woodyette. And like I said before, catch Jacob and Mark on Inside Time or Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The link is in the description of this video. And you guys can also go to jacobcolepercussion.com uh, to get their album. And Mari, um, let's go to you here real quick. Uh, psychic medium, animal, animal communicator, Mari Cartagenova. And yes. <laughs> she can connect with Mari at mediummari.com. She has a summit coming up, a healing summit, and also a book. And you can book readings with her. And then there's me. Hi, Marissa Liza Pell, host of The Lounge. My website is connectionbeyond.com. And I do put out a monthly energy forecast where I, you know, you, to make key decisions, it's all about timing to do your transformation, to do your transitions. You want to know what the best days are for career, love life, you know, making big changes in your life. You have to be on my email list. Go to the description of this video. You'll see it at the bottom link in bio. You can get on that list and it comes out once a month on the 15th of the month. And if you, you don't want to miss it because it's next week. So make sure you get it. It'll come in your email. And also you can get on my intuitive development course wait list. We're going to be having program beginner levels one, two, and three. So if you want to know how to trust yourself, make better decisions and not rely on external people to tell you what to do or how to live, this is a chance to get tuned into your own intuitive abilities. So go to the link in bio in the description of this video and get on the wait list because I'm going to be doing specials and promos for the people on the wait list. So if there's anything else anybody wants to say, Jacob and Mark, anything you guys want to say before we go? I was just curious as to uh, what, uh, if there was anything, Mari, uh, you, that you were inspired to share from your experiencing of that, that would be, uh, I don't know, possibly insightful for, for us or anybody who's listening. Both of you, but uh, first, Mari, certainly, I, 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 it's good to connect with you. Even though we didn't thank get to you. I heard everything that you were talking about. It was really insightful. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I don't know. I, I felt it was very moving, all the work that you're doing. And it does feel like it's transcending to another level. It doesn't just feel like it's in the here and now. And, you know, life for the spirit world isn't linear. It's not like how it is for us. So it does feel to me like it's elevating our soul to many different levels as I listen to your music. It's almost like I wanna float off, but it doesn't just feel like a physical thing, it feels like a soul thing. So I do feel like you're very much connecting to that piece and just keep doing what you're doing. Like you said, you're reaching people in a different way than I would or, or Marissa would, but you're reaching them musically and it does touch them soul. And I think in a subconscious way also, probably influence them and you know which direction to move forward in. So beautiful for sharing that that's that's wonderful to hear you say that thank you well thanks everybody for coming we've kept everybody on for usually it's an hour show but it's going to about an hour and 40 and everybody stayed on we had great engagement a lot of people that are on this show every week are like this is the best show of the year so far so congratulations to all of you that are here and i want you all back so whenever you want to okay. come back i know that jacob uh has is coming back once a month now. So he will be back with us monthly. And I hope that Mark will think about it. And of course, Mari, you're more than welcome to come on whenever you'd like again. Thank and um, so we will just uh, say bye to everybody. Everybody wave. Thanks for coming.